everybody, I put out a boomerang this morning of making cold brew and I had so many messages of people asking me how I do it that I wanted to just hop on here and show you how. So it's really super easy and um, everybody being at, stuck at home right now, it's kind of the perfect time to try it out. Door County Coffee obviously has the best coffee for cold brew. They have the best coffee period, but for cold brew specifically because they have amazing flavors. So I personally, as you can see, like my coffee seriously black. So um, the reason I love it, one of the reasons is that they have a lot of flavors. And so with our flavors, you can get a little something extra in your coffee without adding any sugar, any calories, it's gluten-free, all that good stuff. So it's something special that I can mix up every single day. So what you're gonna need is a 10 ounce bag of Dork County coffee. So just because I love flavor doesn't mean you have to have flavored coffee. You, this also can be done with regular coffee, um, any signature blend or anything like that to make cold brew, obviously, as well as hot coffee. So um, I'm just using vanilla creme brulee. Uh, it's what I had at home. Now, I mentioned there is a toddy system that is specifically for making cold brew in your house, and it's available on darkhoneycoffee.com. Just search in-home toddy system. That would make things way easier. And we're shipping direct to site or direct to your home now, um, $35 for free freight, so it would be really easy to order that. I don't have one at home, unfortunately, so I got a little creative with what I'm using. So um, I started this process this morning. So what you're gonna need before you start is a Pyrex bowl. This one's pretty big. It's uh, an eight cup size. And then obviously your 10 ounce bag, like I said, and water, that's it. So it's super, super easy. So what mine looks like right now is this. It's like a really thick, kind of mixture um, and then I'll tilt this down so you can see it's really thick on the top so it's like it looks almost like a brownie on top because it's so thick and that's the grounds so all you're gonna do is you are going to um, set up your bowl and the first step oops now my computer is slipping there we go so the first step is you're going to take your pyrex bowl and just pour all the coffee right into it all 10 ounces so this recipe um, is going to make about ish seven ish cups the grounds absorb water so that's where you're going to lose some of your volume when you're adding water in so once you have all your grounds in this bowl you just pour six cups of water over the top it's like really easy, super simple. That's all I did this morning. And then it's going to look like this kind of mixture that I showed you before. So you just let that sit on your counter for 12 to 15 hours, just like it is. So I am gonna stir it a little bit to make sure that the water can access all the grounds throughout the day, um, but that's all you need to do. So after it's steeped for 12 to 15 hours then we are going to strain it out so that might get a little interesting and that's where your toddy system is going to be really handy because it's made for that but um what we're gonna do is be creative so i think this is gonna work pretty well we'll tune in tomorrow to see how it goes but bring a strainer with you and a coffee filter and i think it's gonna work pretty darn well but the reason cold brew is amazing, if you haven't for some reason tried it already, you need to because it's 65% less acidic than hot coffee and it brings flavors through really well. So um, like I said, I'm using vanilla creme brulee. My suggestion if you don't want flavored coffee would be black and tan. It's like amazing cold brew. Um, it's smooth and really a good coffee flavor. Um, some of the other flavored coffees that you might want to try that are absolutely phenomenal are peanut butter crunch, um, coconut cupcakes, and churro. We just tried churro. That was amazing. So make sure to try those out. And blueberry cobbler. Oh my God. There's a lot of really good ones. Um, so get creative and it's a lot of fun. And I hope you guys can make some cold brew at home and enjoy it while you're just at home, staying in place, sheltering in place. So stay safe. I'll be back on tomorrow morning to filter this out and see how it turned out. Thanks all. Hey everybody. So welcome to part two of cold brew. So yesterday we ended with the 10 ounce bag of grounds in our Pyrex bowl and being soaked in six cups of water. So 
What I did last night actually, because you want it to steep for 12 to 15 hours. So I strained this last night. So I started the process at seven o'clock in the morning. So by eight o'clock at night, it was ready to be taken out. You don't wanna go over the 15 hours, otherwise you're gonna overdo the extraction from the grounds and it's gonna be bitter and not a great cup of cold brew. So what I did is, let's pretend this is our um, soaking grounds. It is actually the grounds. So all that I did, like I said I was going to do, is I put a coffee filter right in a strainer so that it could soak through. That's where the in-home toddy is going to be like your best friend because you don't have to do all the MacGyvering of things. But um, this is what I had to do because I don't have one right now, unfortunately. So what I did is I took a second Pyrex bowl, and this is my cold brew concentrate, and just put it over the top and then poured the grounds right in there. It worked really slick. Um, the only thing is that coffee strains through a filter pretty slowly, and so it took kind of a long time. I didn't want to run over the filter and risk getting grounds in the concentrate. So that's where it kind of was a long process, but that's okay, it all worked out. Um, and now, once that it dripped, what you want to make sure to do is squeeze out your grounds. I just used a spoon and pushed them down because the grounds are going to absorb water and so you want to get as much of that concentrate out as you possibly can so when you are done it's going to look like this so it looks a lot like cold brew but it's not this is a concentrate so if you drink it it's going to be bitter strong whatever you want to say it's not going to be your best cup of cold brew so our next step is just going to be adding more water it's really simple um, and I've already measured out my water. So depending on the strength of coffee that you like, um, you can add two to three cups. I'm adding three because I drink it black and I just like a more medium cup of coffee. So we just pour this right in. Whoop, spilling. And then we are all done. Now this is cold brew. So um, last night, yesterday while it was soaking, I left it right out on the counter. So you don't have to worry about putting it in the fridge while it's soaking or draining. But now this finished product should go in the refrigerator um, and it's gonna last for two weeks. So even like, this is a pretty big batch. This made, um, let's see, where's my measurements here? Eight cups. So that's, a decent amount. I'm not going to drink that in one day, even though I absolutely love coffee. We're not quite there yet. Um, so this will probably take me a couple days, but it's going to last for two weeks. That's insane. So um, you are ready to go and drink it. Um, I'm just actually going to pour myself a glass right now. Like I said, I like it black, so this is as good as it gets for me. And it smells amazing. My whole kitchen smells like coffee, and I love that smell. Even a little tinge of vanilla creme brulee, the flavor that I use, it's fantastic. So enjoy.